In this video, I'm going to talk about irreducible polynomials, specifically what it means for a polynomial to be irreducible, and then different ways that we can test to see if a polynomial is irreducible. I should note that this video is in the context of abstract algebra, so if you're in a basic high school algebra class or college algebra type of class, um, this video is not for you. So what does it mean for a polynomial to be irreducible? Well, this is similar to what it means for a number to be prime. A polynomial is irreducible if it cannot be factored into a product of polynomials of a lower degree. So 7 is prime because it cannot be factored into a product of smaller numbers. And, and so x minus 3 is, we could think of it as being quote-unquote prime, but what we really mean is irreducible. And that's because it cannot be factored into polynomials of lower degree. But there's a problem here, because 7 can be factored. 7 can be factored as 3 plus the square root of 2 times 3 minus the square root of 2. And similarly, the polynomial x squared minus 3 can be factored into x plus the square root of 3 and x minus the square root of 3. So we need to be a little bit more specific by what we mean when we say it can or cannot be factored in a certain way. So we need to specify where a number is prime or where a polynomial is irreducible. So 7 is prime in z. So remember, z means the set of all integers. So 7 is prime in the set of integers because 7 cannot be factored into a product of smaller numbers in z, in the set of integers. And x squared plus 3 is prime, or irreducible, in q of x. And again, remember what this means is polynomials with rational coefficients. And that's because x squared plus 3 cannot be factored into a product of polynomials of lower degree in q of x. So again, it cannot be factored into polynomials that also have coefficients that are rational numbers. So now that we know what it means for a polynomial to be irreducible, how do we test to see if the polynomial is actually irreducible? Well, there's actually several different tests that we're going to talk about in this video, and some of them depend on the degree of the polynomial you're testing, and some of them test on the domain that the polynomial lives in. So again, just to review a little bit of this notation, Q is the set of rational numbers, R is the set of real numbers, and z sub n, that's the set of integers mod n. So that's modular arithmetic. So the coefficients of the polynomial are in modular arithmetic. So the first way that we can think about uh, for testing for irreducibility is what I call the brute force method. So so the brute force method says that if we can show that none of the polynomials that could be factors of our polynomial actually are factors, if there's no possible way, I, I looked at all of the factors that could possibly be factors and none of them were factors, then you know that your polynomial is irreducible. Now that seems a little bit impractical, but in some cases we can actually do that. So for example, what if we wanted to show that x to the fourth plus x plus one was irreducible in z2 of x? So again, remember that z2 of x is integers mod 2. So the idea here is that if I call this x to the fourth plus x plus 1, if I call that f of x, then what I'm interested in is can f of x be factored as g of x times h of x, where g of x and h of x have lower degree than 4. So the degree of the polynomial f is 4, so where the degree of g of x is less than 4, and the degree of h of x is less than 4. So it's not enough to just be able to factor out a constant, for example. So I actually have to be able to factor it into real polynomials that both have lower degree. So, But let's think about this, because when we have f of x factored as g of x times h of x, the degree of f of x would have to equal the degree of g of x plus the degree of h of x. When we multiply polynomials, the degrees add together. But this number is 4. So we'd have to somehow be able to get 4 out of two numbers being added together that are both less than 4. Now, the degree of a polynomial is always greater than or equal to 0. And we're not allowing 0 because we need both of the polynomials to be uh, have degree less than 4. So the only possibility is to have a degree 1 plus a degree 3, or 3 plus 1, but the naming here, we could just switch the names, so a 1 and a 3, or we just have a 2 and a 2. So if 
f of x is reducible, if f of x can be factored in this way, then that means that one of the factors has to either be a 1 or a 2. So remember our polynomial was f of x equals x to the fourth plus x plus 1, and that was in z2 of x. So if we want to know if f of x is reducible, what we're really asking is, does f of x have a degree 1 or degree 2 factor? Well, in z2 of x, there aren't that many degree 1 or degree 2 polynomials. We can, in fact, list them all. The degree 1 polynomials are x and x plus 1. And that's it. Remember, the coefficients have to be in the integers mod 2. And the only integers mod 2 are 0 and 1. The coefficient of x here can't be 0 because then the polynomial wouldn't be degree 1. So it's really whether we have x plus 0, which we usually just write as x, or x plus 1. And then the degree 2 polynomials, there are a couple more of those. It has to start with x squared, really 1x squared. And then the other coefficients can either be 0 or 1. So I could have x squared plus x plus 1, x squared plus 0x plus 1, x squared plus x plus 0 are just x squared. And so now what I'm asking is, can these polynomials, can any of them be a factor of x squared, x to the fourth plus x plus 1? Now some of these we can eliminate right away. Let's look at just x. Is x to the fourth plus x plus 1 divisible by x? Well, we can tell right away that it's not because we've got this constant term 1. If I multiplied something by x, then I'm not going to have a constant term. My constant term is going to be 0. So that means that x is not a factor. Similarly, x squared is not a factor because we've got a constant term of 1. And similarly, again, x squared plus x is not a factor because, again, if you think about it, if I multiplied x squared plus x by something, there wouldn't be any constant term. So now let's look at the other factors, or the other potential factors. So is x plus 1 a factor? Well, I can figure that out by doing some long division. So I'm going to divide x plus 1 into x to the fourth plus x plus 1. Now, I left a big space there because there's uh, columns for x cubed and x squared. So if I really wanted to be specific here, I could put them in explicitly. But usually I just leave a blank space so that I know to leave a little bit of uh, space there. So when we do our long division, we take the leading term of the thing we're dividing by, and then the leading term of the thing we're dividing into, and so we say x goes into x to the fourth, and that's going to go in x cubed times. We're going to multiply and then subtract. Now, x to the fourth minus x to the fourth, that's just zero. x, zero x cubed minus x cubed is negative x cubed, or negative one x cubed. And in mod two, negative one is the same as positive one. So we just have x cubed. And then we bring down the other terms, so we've got plus x plus one. We keep going. x goes into x cubed, that's going to be x squared times. Multiply, subtract. We get x cubed plus x squared. When we subtract, we get x squared plus x plus 1. x goes into x squared x times. Multiply and subtract. And when we subtract, we just get 1. So now we can't divide anymore because x doesn't go into 1. And we got a non-zero remainder. This is not 0. And that means that x plus 1 is not a factor. So continuing in this way, we have two more long division problems to do. We've got to check whether x squared plus x plus 1 is a factor, and check whether x squared plus 1 is a factor. So it's, this is a long problem, but we do those two more long division problems. We're going to find, I'll give you a spoiler here, we're going to find that none of those two polynomials are factors, so we're eventually going to be able to cross those off our list once we do those two long division problems. And that means that none of the factors that could possibly have been factors, none of them were factors, and that means that x to the fourth plus x plus 1 in z2 of x is irreducible. So that's an example of using the brute force method because in this case, because we were working in mod 2, 
there were only so many things that could have been factors, and we just eliminated them all. So that means our polynomials are reducible. So another big way that we can test polynomials for irreducibility is to look for roots. So what does it mean for an, a, an element of our field here to be a root? So again, when I say f here, f could represent q, the set of rational numbers. It could represent r, the set of real numbers. It could represent zp, where p is a prime. Um, and there's all sorts of other fields that uh, you, know, you may discover as you continue your study in abstract algebra. So f just represents one of those fields. So an element of that field is a root simply if I plug that number into my polynomial, do I get 0? Now equivalently, getting 0 when I plug in a is the same as saying that x minus a is a factor of f of x. So that means that if I have a root, if we have a root, then the polynomial is reducible, which just means not irreducible. The reverse of this statement is not true. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is not true that if the polynomial is reducible, then it has to have a root. That's not true. So just keep in mind that this statement only goes in one direction. If you have a root, then your polynomial is reducible. So let's just work through a quick example. So we've got a polynomial here, x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 3x plus 1. We want to show that that is reducible, again, not irreducible, in z5 of x. And as we're going to see, there are different ways to do this, but let's try looking for a root, because we know that if we have a root, then the polynomial will be reducible. And since we're in z5, there are only five elements of z5, right? z5 is a set that only has five things in it, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so what we can do is just try each of those. If this polynomial is f of x, we can see what's f of 0. What's f of 1? What's f of 2? What's f of 3? And what's f of 4? And if any of those work out to be 0, then we've got a root, and we know that our polynomial is reducible. So when we plug in 0, we get 0 to the 4th, plus 2 times 0 cubed, plus 3 times 0, plus 1. That works out to be 1, and that's not 0, so 0 is not a root. When we plug in 1, we get 1 to the 4th, plus 2 times 1 cubed, plus 3 times 1, plus 1. So that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. And since we're in mod 5, that works out to be 2. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 7, but mod 5, 7 is the same as 2. So that's not 0, so the number 1 that we plugged in is not a root. Let's try plugging in 2. 2 to the 4th plus 2 times 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 plus 1. 2 to the 4th is 16, but 16 is the same as 1. 2 times 2 cubed is also 16. 16 is the same as 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 is the same as 1. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. And 4 is not 0 in z5, so that's not a root. Continuing in this manner, we plug in f of 3. We get 3 to the 4th plus 2 times 3 cubed plus 3 times 3 plus 1. When we add all that up, we get 145, and since we're in mod 5, 145 does equal 0. So this means that 3 is a root. It's a root of f of x. And that means that x minus 3 is a factor of f of x. And since we've got a non-trivial factor, so we've got a factor of degree 1, which means we could do a long division problem and write our original f of x as that degree 1 factor times some degree 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, and that would give us a way to factor our f of x, and that shows that this f of x is reducible in this field. So what if we had gotten toward the end of our list in the previous example and not found any roots? Does that mean that our polynomial is irreducible? Well, not necessarily. As I mentioned before, this only goes in one direction. If we look at this polynomial, x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 4 in, over the real numbers, that has no roots, and, but the polynomial is reducible. So if we, we can factor it, we can see here as x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 4. So keep examples like this in mind, right? Just make sure that you remember that just because a polynomial has no roots doesn't necessarily mean that it's an irreducible polynomial. 
However, and this is where folks get confused sometimes, if a polynomial has no roots and its degree is 2 or 3, then it turns out that it is irreducible. Because remember, has a root is equivalent to has a degree 1 factor. And if the degree of the polynomial is 2, then the only meaningful way that that polynomial could factor is as a degree 1 times degree 1. And if the polynomial has degree 3, then the only meaningful way that that could factor is as a 2 plus a 1 or a 1 plus a 2. So a degree 2 times a degree 1 or a degree 1 times a degree 2. But notice that either way, there's a 1 in the picture. Why do I only talk about degree 2 or degree 3? What about degree 4? Well, degree 4 could be a 2 plus a 2. You can factor a degree 4 in the example that we just saw as a degree 2 times a degree 2, and those two degree 2 polynomials could themselves be irreducible. It's possible that that polynomial would not have a root. So that's why this only works for degree 2 or degree 3. So if you have a polynomial that's degree 2 or degree 3, then it is enough to show that it has no roots. So again, just looking at another example, we've got 2x squared plus x plus 1, and we want to show that that's irreducible in z3. Because the degree is 2, it suffices to show suffices to show that 2x squared plus x plus 1 has no roots. If our polynomial had degree 4 or higher, it would not be enough just to show that it had no roots. We'd have to do something else. But in this case, the polynomial has degree 2, so it is enough to show that it has no roots. Now, because we're in Z3, there's only three possible roots. 0, 1, and 2. Now, I'll let you work this out on your own, but when we plug in 0, 1, and 2, again, working mod 3, we get 1, 1, and 2. And this shows us, since none of those are equal to 0, no roots, and degree 2, our polynomial that we were looking at is degree 2, so irreducible. Don't skip this part. Don't be tempted to say that just because your polynomial has no roots, then it must be therefore irreducible. It's no roots and it's got degree 2, that's why the polynomial is irreducible. It also works for degree 3, does not work for any higher degrees. So when we're in a modular arithmetic setting, we know that we only have a certain number of things that could be roots. But what if we're looking at a polynomial over the rational numbers? There's infinitely many rational numbers. We can't possibly try them all. So how could we know for sure that our polynomial has no roots? Well, if your polynomial has integer coefficients, then there's a way that you can look for all the rational roots of that polynomial. And what it says is that if we're looking for a root, so this r over s, this is a potential rational root. So if that number is a root, then it must have that the top of the fraction has to divide a 0, which is the constant term. This is the constant term. And the bottom of the fraction has to divide the leading coefficient, which is the a n. So the top of the fraction has to divide the constant term, the bottom of the fraction has to divide the leading coefficient. So this rational root test lets us make a list of every possible rational root, and if we plug all of those potential roots in and none of them give us zero, then that tells us that our polynomial doesn't have any rational roots, doesn't have any degree one factors in the rational numbers. So here we've got a polynomial with integer coefficients, 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 12x minus 8. And so a potential rational root, a rational root r over s, has the bottom of the fraction. The bottom of the fraction has to divide the leading coefficient, so s has to be a divisor of 3. And the top of the fraction has to divide the constant term, which is negative 8. So this means that the top of the fraction has to, or the bottom of the fraction, I should say, has to be either plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 3. 
and the top of the fraction has to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. So this gives us a somewhat lengthy list of possible roots, but it's not an infinitely long list, so that's certainly better than just trying haphazardly every rational number we could think of. So this gives us, if we think about this, if the, the bottom of the fraction is 1, that means that our potential potential rational roots are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. Again, that's if the bottom of the fraction is 1 or minus 1. If the bottom of the fraction is 3, then we've got plus or minus a third, plus or minus 2 thirds, plus or minus 4 thirds, plus or minus 8 thirds. So that's a list of 16 rational numbers. And again, using a calculator or a computer, we could plug all 16 of those numbers into our polynomial and see if any of them give us a zero. And as we work through our list, what we find is that f of 2 thirds does in fact turn out to be zero. And since we've got a root, that means that we have a degree 1 factor. That means x minus 2 thirds is a factor of my function f of x. And that means that my polynomial here, this is my f of x, is reducible. Looking at another example, so again we have a polynomial here. Again, I'll call it f of x. It's got integer coefficients, and we're looking to see if it's irreducible in the, of the rational numbers. So if we're looking at potential rational roots, that look like r over s, we must have s dividing the leading coefficient, which is 1, even though there's no number written there, that means that this is a polynomial with leading coefficient 1, and the top of the fraction has to be divisor of the constant term, which is 6. So this means that s is plus or minus 1, and r is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, or plus or minus 6. So the possible rational roots are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. So we take all of these potential roots and plug them all into our polynomial. And again, what we're looking for is any one of these to give us a 0. If we get a 0, then that means that we have a root. And since we have a root, we have a degree 1 factor, which means our polynomial is reducible. Now again, using a calculator or a computer, we can plug these in. f of 1 turns out to be 4. Next one is 10. Then we get 16, 28, 78, 96, 1,284, and finally 1,320. And none of those are zeros. So none are zero. So my f of x here has no rational roots. So does that mean it's an irreducible polynomial? Well, we can't conclude that here because the degree of the polynomial is 4. Remember what we said earlier. If the polynomial has degree 2 or 3, then showing that the polynomial has no roots shows that the polynomial is irreducible. All we've done here is shown that this polynomial has no degree 1 factors. But the degree of the polynomial is 4. So it could, as far as we know, factor as a degree 2 times a degree 2. We don't know that that doesn't happen right now. So we would have to do something else or do something in addition to try to show that this polynomial is either reducible or irreducible. We cannot conclude anything here. So we're not sure yet. We have to use some other test or some other way to find whether this polynomial is irreducible. We have not completed this problem because we don't have a tool yet that we can use to do that. One tool that we could use in the previous problem is called Eisenstein's criterion. So Eisenstein's criterion says that if we can do three things to a polynomial with integer coefficients, we need to find a prime for which that prime divides all of the coefficients of the polynomial except for the leading coefficient. So each of these coefficients, a n minus 1, a n minus 2, which is hiding here in the dot dot dot, a n minus 3, and so on, all of these coefficients in the middle, 
this coefficient and this coefficient. These have to all be divisible by p for some prime p. A n here has to be not divisible by p. And then finally, this a0 here has to be divisible not just by p, well, it has to be divisible by p, but not divisible by p squared. Any of the other coefficients, obviously except for the leading coefficient, those could be divisible by p squared, but the, the constant term, that cannot be divisible by p squared. If all of those things happen, if there is a prime that does all of those things, then Eisenstein's criterion says that we can conclude that our polynomial is irreducible. So if we go back to the example we were just looking at, where we had x to the fourth minus 3x plus 6, the, the prime we can look for here is 3. So we can think of this as x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus negative 3x plus 6. Now all of these coefficients, 0, 0, negative 3, and 6, these are all divisible by 3. So the prime, the p I'm picking here, is 3. The coefficient of x to the fourth, which is 1, that is not divisible by 3. So far, so good. And then 6 is not divisible by 3 squared, which is 9. So because we found a prime, in this case 3, that satisfies all three of these conditions, that means that this polynomial is irreducible. So we didn't find any roots in the previous uh, example, but that just not finding any roots wasn't enough. But now using Eisenstein's criterion, we can conclude that that polynomial from the previous example is in fact irreducible. Let's do a couple more examples. So we've got 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 18. So again, what we're looking for is a prime that divides 4, 6, and 18, doesn't divide 3, and where the square of that prime also doesn't divide 18. So we've got to find something, a prime divisor that's common to 4, 6, and 18. The only prime that could possibly work is 2. That's the only prime that divides 4, 6, and 18. So let's check our criteria. So does P divide each of those coefficients? Does P divide 4, 6, and 18? Yes. Does P not divide 3, the leading coefficient? Yes, p does not divide 3. And does p squared not divide the constant term? Well, p squared is 4. Does 4 divide 18? The answer to that is no, which is what we want. And that means that we've got the three criteria taken care of, which means that this polynomial is irreducible. So we would say that this polynomial is irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion. And it doesn't hurt to tell the person you're talking to that you use the prime 2. All right, there's one more test we can use to tell if our polynomials are irreducible, and that is to reduce the polynomials mod p. Now, it's an unfortunate uh, double use of the word here. So when I say reducing the polynomial mod p, I don't mean factoring. What I mean is taking the coefficients and thinking of the coefficients as being in integers mod p rather than just integers. So I'll show you what that means in a second. But what we find is that if we do this, if we look at our polynomial as being mod p rather than just integers, if that new polynomial that we get is irreducible, then the original polynomial was irreducible. And again, the if-then here is important. So if the new reduced polynomial is irreducible, then the original polynomial is also irreducible. Not so the other way around. So if we look at a polynomial mod p and we get a reducible polynomial, that does not mean that the original polynomial was reducible. So be careful with that as well. So let's take a look here. So we want to show that 4x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 3 is irreducible in q of x. So if we think we want to use this mod p trick, we need to find a prime that does not divide 
this leading coefficient because we don't want to change the degree of the polynomial by looking at it mod, uh, mod p. So in this case, we might think, well, we can't use 2. We can't use p equals 2 because when we look at this mod p, the 4 is going to turn into a 0, and that's going to mean that our polynomial isn't going to be degree 3 anymore. So we can't use p equals 2. Let's try p equals 3. Well, when we reduce our polynomial mod 3, we have 4x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 3. So reducing mod 3 means that we're going to think of each of these coefficients as being mod 3. 4 mod 3 is 1. So instead of 4x cubed, we just have x cubed. 1x squared, well 1 mod 3 is just 1, so nothing really happens there. Negative x, remember that's negative 1x, and mod 3, negative 1, is the same as 2. And then 3 mod 3 is 0, so plus 0. So we have the polynomial x cubed plus x squared plus 2x, but that polynomial is reducible because I can factor out an x, x squared plus x plus 2. So the reduced polynomial, the, the polynomial they got, that we got in z3, in integers mod 3, was reducible, which doesn't help, doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't mean that the original polynomial is reducible, it just doesn't tell us anything. So we could give up on this idea, or we could keep going, and let's try another prime. Well, the next bigger prime that we can use is 5, so let's try it. Let's try p equals 5. So our original polynomial is 4x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 3. In z5 of x, this polynomial looks like, well, 4 is the same as 4 in z5. 1 is the same as 1. Negative 1 is the same as 4, so we've got plus 4x, and then 3 is the same as 3. So 4x cubed plus x squared plus 4x plus 3. So is that polynomial irreducible? Hmm. Well, it's got degree 3. So if we can show that this polynomial has no roots in z5, then that will show that the polynomial is irreducible in z5. And good news, there's only five possible roots, because z5 only has five things in it. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we're going to do is plug all of those things into this polynomial and see what we get. I'm going to save you the trouble here. And what we end up with is 3 when we plug in 0, 2 when we plug in 1, 2 when we plug in 2, 2 when we plug in 3, and 1 when we plug in 4. So this polynomial has no roots, because I didn't get any zeros by plugging anything in, has no roots, and it has degree 3, that's vitally important as we talked about before, so it's irreducible in z5 of x. And since it's irreducible in z5 of x, that means that the original polynomial is irreducible in q of x. in Q. Okay, to try to summarize all of this, we've got several different ways to figure out whether a polynomial is irreducible. One way to do it is just brute force. Show that none of the possible polynomials that could be factors are actually factors. Usually it's easier, though, to do some sort of testing. One way that we can test our polynomial is to see if it has a root. If our polynomial is in modular arithmetic, then there's only so many things that could be roots, so we can just try them all. If the polynomial has integer coefficients, then we can use the rational root test to find all of the possible rational roots. We can also use Eisenstein's criterion. So if we try to find a prime that fits those three parts of the criterion, if we can find a prime like that, then that means our polynomial is irreducible. And then finally, we can try reducing mod p. So it's convenient when we're in mod p because there's only so many things that can happen. We've only got so many possible coefficients, so many possible roots. So if we can find a prime so that when we view that polynomial in integers mod p, if that reduced polynomial is irreducible, then the original polynomial is irreducible. So which test you use in which situation is going to take some practice. So you really just have to do lots of examples and try to use different tests and see which ones work. And eventually you'll develop a bit of an intuition for when you look at a polynomial to try to think about which test you might want to use.